Well, you saw many Republican candidates either trying to walk a, 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 a delicate balance on the Indiana and Arkansas laws on so-called religious freedom, others retreating from their position, many others just saying completely silent, uh, not Ted Cruz. <laughs> Ted Cruz saw this as an opportunity uh, to reinforce his right-wing credentials by comparing the activists who want the same rights for gay people in Indiana and Arkansas as everyone else uh, to the jihadists of Boko Haram and ISIS. Here's Ted Cruz. Look at the jihad that is being waged right now in Indiana and Arkansas going after people of faith who respect the biblical teaching that marriage is the union of one man and one woman. We need to bring people together to the religious liberty values that built this country. It wasn't long ago when, when, when this was an area of bipartisan agreement. It wasn't long ago. It used to be Democrats and Republicans. They might disagree on marginal tax rates. But when it came to the First Amendment, we all stood together and said, of course, every one of us has a God-given right to seek out and worship God and, and to live according to our faith and our conscience and our beliefs. Mike Huckabee is like, this guy's out me. Yeah, well, that's exactly <laughs> yeah. his purpose. Yeah. That's, that's what he's trying to do. He's sitting next to Huckabee and he's like, no, no, vote for me instead. I, I'll, I'll ironically out-jihad him. I mean, he just called gay rights activists jihadis. Mm -hmm, that's right. I'm pretty sure they'd be against jihad. Pretty sure. Yeah. That's right. Uh, uh, and, right. And I'm pretty sure the jihadists are against the gay rights activists. Pretty, pretty sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just, you know, it's like, you know, from Ted Cruz and from so many on the right, this is fairly, uh, this is lighter fare uh, uh, bashing and discrimination. You know, it's mm -hmm. so silly. That it's hard to take. That it's almost hard to take seriously, but you know this matters. This is the, and why the Indiana law mattered. Not because I'm terribly worried about whether uh, uh, two 38 year old men who want to spend their lives together are going to be able to get a cake or some flowers for their wedding. They'll be fine. But it sends this incredibly clear message to 12, 13, 14 year old gay kids who are terrified to come out and fearful of what the repercussions could be that God hates them, and that people like Ted Cruz in power running for president of the United States hate them, think they're different, think they're strange, think they should be ostracized, think they're like ISIS. That's what he's saying, and that is just, it's despicable, and that's why I didn't want to ignore the story. So Ted Cruz is, is great at being Orwellian. So he says the guys who are the Christian zealots have the jihad against them. That's right. No, but wait a minute. The fundamentalists are the ones that wage jihad usually, and you're the ones saying, "I want to impose my religious beliefs on you." I, I didn't ask for your religious beliefs. You—that's what jihadis do. They impose their religious beliefs on people. So, and then he, he has this line in the middle of that video you just saw. He said, "We need to bring people together," and I was like, "Oh, that's interesting. That sounds good." To the religious liberty values that built this country. So we need to build. <laughs> get all of you guys to shut up. And believe in my religious uh, uh, beliefs, and we're going to bring you together uh, so that uh, you all don't have individual ideas, and you just follow exactly what I tell you to do. Well, that's pretty Orwellian. I'm I'm so tired of this extreme right-wing fallacy that talks about the Judeo-Christian founding values right. of this country, right? Like my eighth grade civics was about like this democracy as a melting point. And when we engage in this kind of politics, it, I really feel like we get away from it. I'm much more inspired by a figure like Jim Wallace, who's an evangelical on the left, who you know talks about the Bible having something like 17 references to homosexuality and 3,000 references to poverty. So who does Jesus care more about? Gay people or poor people? I think poor people on the preponderance of the evidence. And I would really imagine and love to see this Republican primary geared more towards socioeconomic, issue, socioeconomic issues than these hot button, tired old social issues that the right wing tends to hang their hat on. And, and at this I thought point we moved beyond this. But we did, but the Republican primary voters didn't. So right now, Wall Street Journal, New NBC News poll out, 
59% of Americans are in favor of gay marriage, making it legal. Right, okay. so that means to so, his demise. Yeah, so he's the, he's you're looking at a dinosaur there, right? But unfortunately, he's among other dinosaurs. The Republican primary voters are not that 59%. And he thinks, I can't go low enough in a Republican primary for president, okay? So I'm going to go lower and lower and lower. And for the people who are in the in the camp, 59% of Americans who believe that gays should have the same right to marry, not any more rights, the same right to marry, as straight Americans, uh, he says you're jihadis. You know, and the thing, and he's using an argument that we've used, uh, except he's twisting it around. I mean, it's much like the war on Christmas. Again, it's it's that the the white Christians in this country are somehow under some sort of attack, that they're the victims.